Okay, it's going to be a preview of Full Gear 2024. What are we now? We're, we're, by the time you see this video, I think maybe five hours away from uh, you know the start of the pay-per-view. So yeah, a lot of anticipation. I, I'm actually excited about it. I, I love that uh, November rain video package. Uh, I, I think it came off great. You almost forget how good that song was. I mean, I, I've, I know the song. You know, I heard it growing up on the, uh, you know, they used to play it on the MTV Top 100 countdown, but man, like, I didn't realize how good that song was until they played it back. So, shout out to Tony Khan, uh, and you know, for the song and for this card, man. I know a lot of people were worried that they were going to put Osprey in a tag match. I even said, you know, Tony Khan's not going to fuck around. This, this is going to be an incredible card, full gear, you know, one of the biggest pay per views of the year. So, I want to shout that out. Uh, but yeah, before we get into the, the card here, I actually you know, structured out what I think the order should be. If anyone has any different ideas or mixed feelings on, on how you should present the card, because I think that's one of the issues sometimes with AEW pay-per-view. Sometimes they put, you know, certain matches on first or, or too early, and sometimes it's tough to follow it. Um, but yeah, just the complacency issue, you know, the storyline with Moxley and, uh, you know, him calling at AEW guys for, for being complacent with the contracts and everything. You know, it, it's kind of an interesting, um, you know, thing to evaluate. Because w when you're looking at AEW pay-per-views as a whole, you know, the, the consensus is that they over-deliver. I mean, for the most part, the pay-per-views have been great. You know, especially since the pandemic ended. So w why why is there so much labeling of guys just being complacent? And, you know, Punk has even alluded to this as well. And he even just did an interview saying that, that he regrets, you know, giving certain guys the time of day. I think the guy that kind of came to my mind more than anybody when Punk said that was, was Hangman Page. Um, but, yeah, I, I don't know why. You know, so many people feel like that. But I, I don't know. I guess when you do think about it, I, I think there's there's somewhat of a complacency with the spot in terms of maybe the Young Bucks, maybe Jericho. You know, even though Hangman has delivered for the most part, you, you kind of get the feeling that like maybe overall, like he's he's complacent in his spot. I mean, I mean, Swerve even kind of called him out on that as well. But uh, yeah, it's been really, really interesting how you haven't seen Moxley uh, with the championship yet they're, they're kind of holding the belt hostage and you know th that that kind of leads me to believe that maybe possibly cassidy you know could take this thing tonight uh you know but we'll get we'll get to that in a second but yeah man let me just run down this card i think to open up the show i like the idea of going with Takeshita and ricochet i think that'll be a hot opener but still i still think you could follow that though i think if you put osprey in that opening spot i, I just think it's it, it's not fair to the rest of the card but i think Takesta and ricochet they've shown great chemistry so far in the tag match and even in that triple threat you know ricochet has been kind of flirting a little bit with uh mvp but at the same time, he hasn't really accepted any offers. Takesh has been a badass heel, uh, except the money from uh, MJF. I know this whole thing with MJF and MVP and, and Don Callis, you know, throwing money around with the Dynamite Diamond. It gets a little bit confusing. I think even Nadra got confused on it. But I think Takesh and Ricochet should be an awesome matchup. Uh, no doubt about it. Uh, MJF taking on Roderick Strong. Interesting situation here. Uh, you know, yeah, MJF was was kind of paying guys off, especially Don Callis, to make sure that, uh, you know, Adam Cole, uh, you know, didn't get the three victories to, you know, be eligible to challenge MJF. So it's going to be MJF versus Roderick. You know, big match for Roderick. You know, the, the, the promo that Roderick just cut on Dynamite with Tony Schiavone, I, I thought it was good. Now, now, like, when you look back at the promo, though, there, were, there was a little bit of boring chance, and, you know, I don't think it resonated with anybody, but... You know, it's good considering, like, if you go back to, like, 2003, there's no way Roderick could have delivered a promo that good. But I think he did a good job with it. Um, you know, it, the storyline here is more about Cole, though. Um, it's it's just more about, you know, Cole and the Undisputed Era just hating MJF more than anything. Uh, but Cole, his return's been kind of weird. You know, it's funny. The matches have pretty much, you know, been booked to over-deliver. But Cole... He, he looks a little bit, like, fragile, though. Like, I don't know if he's really overselling the ankle injury on purpose. But, yeah, he, he looks, you know, just a, a little bit sluggish. And, uh, you know, some of the fans have actually booed him. So it should be really interesting to see if, if Cole, you know, where he really aligns here. I could definitely see Cole turning on Strong later. 
Uh, but you get the point here. MJF and Strong, I think it should be a hell of a matchup. You know, say what you want about MJF, but the pay-per-view matches have really delivered, you know, strong, no pun intended, over the, over the last year. So uh, I do like the matchup. I think it could go on second. I, th I still think it would be great. You know, MJF has proven that he's, when he's in this, uh, you know, opening, opening spot or even the second match of the night, the matches have usually been pretty strong. Um, all right, so we have the tag match. We got Private Party, Outrunners, Kings of the Black Throne, uh, and the Acclaimed in a four-way tag. Uh, you know, I really wouldn't expect much from this match. You know, the, the Young Bucks put over Private Party, which was good. You know, I, I think the Bucks and Private Party match... It was really probably the highlight of Dynamite matches, uh, you know, from Wrestle Dream to Full Gear. I mean, it wasn't a spectacular month, I think, in terms of, uh, you know, Dynamite matches. But, you know, that that would probably be my pick for maybe best match, uh, you know, on this build to Full Gear. And, you know, shout out to Private Party. They delivered in that match. That was a much better match than the one that they had at Wrestle Dream. But with this four-way match right here, I think it's good. It's, it's really refreshing. I think the tag team scene needs to be refreshed. You know, I, the Bucks are going to take some time off, which is which is fine. It made sense because of the storyline. You know, they really don't want to get involved, and they're heels anyway, so it really doesn't make sense. And then, you know, FTR as well. I think we're kind of burned out with seeing the Bucks and FTR. But, you know, Private Party should probably retain here. I think Kings of, Kings of the Black Throne probably have the most momentum going into this thing. I'm not... I'm not opposed to putting the belts on them. I, I, I'd actually like to see them win in this spot. You know, the acclaimed is kind of stale right now. And they've kind of planted the seeds, you know, for a split. I think one of these guys might join the Hurt Syndicate, especially Max with his rapping ability. You could see in the, the, the promo there, it, it kind of reminded me of the Davey and Rocky situation with, um, you know, Davey and Roderick situation from uh, Ring of Honor with Larry Sweeney. When, you know, Roderick didn't want to go to Sweet and Sour and Davey did. It kind of looks like the same thing right there. I think Max could break away. I don't know. I think the acclaim's a little bit stale. So I could see them going in, I, I could see them going in that direction. Uh, Jack Perry taking on Daniel Garcia. It's kind of funny. I think a lot of the buildup here is on collision. So I didn't see most of the buildup. They did show, you know, a lot of the crazy stuff. When they hijacked, uh, you know, Jack Perry's scapegoat vehicle and tied him up in the chair, Garcia cut some really good promos here about how Jack Perry's been complacent, and um, you know, you saw a lot of a lot of good stuff here between these two. This is going to be for the TNT title. Garcia even took shots at him, saying, you know, you don't have your boys with you, and you know, you you don't have the respect that I have for the TNT title. So it should be good. I, I can see this being disappointing if it comes off like you know a Jack Perry match, and when you look back on it now. It's kind of frustrating that Jack Perry got that big spot at All Out if, you know, Danielson's reign wasn't going to last as long as we would have hoped for. But I, I think this is a big match for both guys. I think it'll be awesome, man. Um, you know, this could probably benefit by, you know, going on early as well. So, but uh, I think they'll do all right in that spot. Next up, we got Jay White versus Hangman Page. Uh, a lot of history between these guys. You know, the, the match that they had at Wrestle Dream, I, I just, I thought it was disappointing for an opener. I, I was just really, you know, dumbfounded by how the crowd reacted for such a spectacular matchup. I, I just think at the time, I think Jay White is still trying to, you know, build himself back up as a fan favorite, as a babyface. I think fans are so accustomed to seeing him as a heel. I think that was a problem. Um, but yeah, man, it's, it, it should be really good, man. These guys have been, you know, going at each other for months. You know, this is pretty much the rubber match of this trilogy. You know, Hangman won in the Owen Hart, you know, Jay White won in the opener at Wrestle Dream. I, I could see Jay White winning this thing again. I still think he needs, you know, a, a win. I, I still think he needs momentum. I still think they're trying to build him back up. Um, but it should be a really good match. I just hope the reaction here is is much better than it was at Wrestle Dream. I, I think the match will be even better as well. I mean, the match at Wrestle Dream was good. I was just disappointed by the crowd. Uh, Swerve and Lashley. I think Swerve and Lashley could go next. Um, you know, I, I think you know Swerve really has over delivered, especially on pay per view. So, I I I think. In, in terms of it feeling like a swerve match, I, I think it could thrive in this spot. You know, with Lashley, you know, he's been hit or miss, I, I, I think, in the ring. I, I think overall, Lashley's a hell of a talent. He's got a hell of a look. What, what's kind of been missing with Lashley, I think, 
It's just the charisma. I mean, we've seen guys in different forms of entertainment that have, you know, very similar looks to Lashley, whether it be Shaq or whether it be other guys. Um, but still, I think Lashley still hasn't really found it yet in terms of uh, charisma and mic skills. But, uh, but yeah, I, I mean, I, I think with this Hurt Syndicate, we've seen Shelton have some good matches on Dynamite. I, I've been impressed with Shelton so far. I think Shelton showed some different things and some, and some freedom in AEW so far. But, you know, I'm not expecting a lot out of Lashley here, but I will say this. I, I think this all-black stable, the, the Hurt Syndicate, the Hurt Business with MVP, I, I like it because I think this might be it. You know, we've never really seen an all-black stable, you know, thrive, I think, in wrestling for the most part. You know, even, the, even Nation of Domination, it was more beneficial to The Rock than the group as a whole. And, you know, we, we've seen, uh, you know, black groups dominate hip-hop. Obviously, you know, the black culture has dominated, you know, sports from basketball to football, you know, not really baseball, but, you know, baseball was the start of that. So, but in pro wrestling, I just don't know if the black culture has ever really made, you know, that much of a dent that the way they have in other forms of entertainment. So this could be it, though. I think this could be, I like where MVP is right now. I, I think Lashley and Shelton, they're a little bit past their prime. But if they could kind of mold this group and really find, you know, the right guy, they're definitely looking to find another member, whether it's Ricochet, whether it's Max, whether it's most. I love the idea of Mercedes actually joining this group. I just I just don't know if it would happen. But I'm really not expecting a lot out of Lashley here. I, I mean, I'm not going to use the argument and say, oh, because he's out of the WWE, the match is going to deliver. I mean, does anyone really remember Lashley and TNA that well? And the, I think the answer is no. I don't really, you know, think he was that much more better in TNA than WWE. But hey, man, Swerve should definitely give a good performance. I think the match should be fun. Like th this will definitely, you know, create some buzz, you know, just from, you know, the entrances. I don't think it would be great, but I I'm definitely looking forward to it. Uh, Mercedes and Chris Statlander. I think this would be dope, man. I think Statlander, this is definitely the best talent that I think Mercedes has worked with yet. You know, Statlander's matches on pay-per-view have over-delivered, over-succeeded. I mean, she really is like our modern-day Sarah Del Rey. Um, so, you know, if it disappoints, you know, I'm not really going to lose any sleep over it. But I would definitely say, out of all of Mercedes' matches so far, I, I think I think this is one that, you know, should definitely be a lot better than the other ones. Um, all right, Osprey and Fletcher, this should be dope. I think this is going to be so good. You, you, you can't have much follow this. So I will put it on right before the main event. Uh, you know, Fletcher is really, I, I think he's been good, man. I, I like the fact that he shaved his head. I like the fact that he doesn't want to be like Osprey anymore. Osprey touched on some really interesting stuff about how, you know, Fletcher was begging him, you know, during the pandemic for a place to stay. And, you know, they, they were hanging out together. So there's a lot of history here. And, uh, you know, Fletcher has been incredible, I, I think, on the mic and in the ring. I, I like him shaving his head. He kind of reminds me of uh, DiCaprio from The Departed you know, with this new look that he has. So uh, it should be some really, really good stuff here. I mean, Os Osprey always delivers. When you combine it with the fact that he knows Fletcher like family, there's going to be a level of comfort here that you don't normally get with Osprey matches. So I'm definitely looking forward to it. it. It should definitely steal the show. This could be the match of, not just a match of the night, but it could end up being one of the best matches of the year. You know, it, it could enter that, that top five. So... You know, Osprey's already solidified himself as the MVP, so he doesn't really have to prove anything. But, you know, Osprey did say that, you know, there's been four AEW champions this year and none of them have really, you know, topped them. I, I don't know. That's kind of a weird statement. That's like saying, you know, but Danielson and Swerve have had some really good matches as well. So I don't know if Osprey meant any disrespect by that, but I, I get what he was trying to say that, you know, that even though he hasn't been AEW champion yet, you know, the best matches of the year have still involved Osprey. Uh, the only exception will be All In, though. I think Danielson and Swerve, that's the only show where they got him at. So let's just let's just be clear. Next up, we have uh, Moxley taking on Orange Cassidy. Um, someone presented the idea to me that uh, Brian Danielson might return and help Cassidy win the belt just to save AEW. I think it'd be dope as hell. I, I could see that happening maybe down the road, but not exactly tonight. Um... 
it's a weird situation because I, I don't like the fact that you, you're not seeing the AEW title. I, I, I really don't like that, but I, I get the point. Moxie's trying to make a statement. You know, maybe the statement can't be made unless they hijack the title. Um, you know, this whole thing with the... Um, what are they calling themselves? The Death Riders. I think it's been okay. I, I think it, it, it kind of reminds me of... Uh, it's almost like AEW's version of the NWO with all the, the beatdowns in the parking lots. You know, Chuck Taylor got beat down. You know, the, the highlight will be that King of Swing to Darby. That was insane. You know, Claudio and Darby had a really good uh, match on Dynamite. That that could have been on the pay-per-view. I mean, but there's there's been so many, you know, crazy beatdowns. The way they've been kind of using Wheeler... They've been kind of using Yuta as kind of like a prostitute uh, just to kind of bait people in. So it's been kind of weird. I haven't been crazy about the whole thing. But, um, you know, I like Orange Cassidy, though. Like, I, I think I think the, the stable and, you know, where Moxley is right now in being this dominant and this, this evil, I think it really is bringing the best out of Orange Cassidy. And, uh, you know, when the, when, when the pressure is on, you know, Cassidy could get serious. He could deliver. I, I love the spot that they did with uh, duct taping him so he couldn't use his hands. So, but uh, yeah, Cassidy pulled out some cool stuff, you know, in terms of promos. And uh, yeah, man, I, I think I think Cassidy proved everybody wrong in, in terms of, you know, doubting, you know, whether he can, uh, you know, deliver in a big spot. And, and let's not forget, a lot of people were kind of lukewarm on uh on all out last year because you know punk wasn't going to be there and who stepped up to the plate more than anybody it was orange cassidy against moxley and you know they they stole the show on that loaded card at all out and i i think they'll do the same thing tonight i, th I think it'll be an incredible matchup uh obviously man you know i'm a little bit worried about the crowd i think the new jersey fans they're a little bit more colder they're a little bit more spoiled than chicago fans but I still think it would be a great main event. And, um, you know, someone was telling me that the, the plan is definitely for Cassidy to be AEW champion. Just not sure if it's going to happen now. But they're def they definitely want to build around Cassidy, though. That's what I'm understanding. So it should be an incredible, um, you know, match. It should be interesting to see if they, if they use that plastic bag again. So if, you, if anybody hasn't seen it yet, there's an HBO, um, there's an HBO Max movie actually. It's called Maxine, and there's other movies too that actually feature the same girl. And uh, at the end of the movie, the girl's father actually takes a plastic bag and tries to suffocate her. Um, so if you haven't seen it, you know I just wanted to bring it to everyone's attention that this this actually happened in an HBO Max original i'm not saying that you know this wasn't moxie's idea i still think it was moxie's idea i don't think ring of honor suffocation had anything to do with the uh situation but i i, I think i think they they probably got the green light to do it i i think someone must have known like hbo max just released a movie where they do the angle so if if we do this you know we're not going to get any criticism because you know they did it in the movie so I think that's probably one of the reasons why they were, you know, why they wanted to do it. Maybe they thought they could get away with it. And, uh, yeah, I mean, look, this is before they signed that major media rights deal. And, um, you know, HBO Max, you know, is, is part of the, uh, you know, Bleacher Report, Warner Brothers Discovery, the part of the family. So, um, you know, I think... Uh, I. Th I'm just saying this. I think a lot more. I think the the move the this whole thing with HBO Max had a, a lot to do with it, more than just you know this being Moxie's idea because he grew up uh, being a big fan of Terry Funk. But uh, but hey man, I wanted to bring that to everyone's attention. But uh, yeah, Punk is going to be at War Games. Uh, the Paul Heyman stuff last night was awesome. <laughs> you know the funny thing is, I thought it was either going to be The Rock or Brock. I don't know, for some reason, I didn't, you know, Punk didn't even cross my mind until he came out. But, you know, because, uh, you know, Solo took out Heyman through the table, you know, and, and Punk is the ultimate Paul Heyman guy. I think it makes a lot of sense. You know, the first time you really get to see Punk and Roman interact last night. So that was really cool. So I'm excited about War Games. I'm excited about Final Battle as well. Uh, I know Jericho's champion again. He won the belt in the ladder war. And, uh, yeah, I just said this to Chase and, um, you know, you know, you could put the Ring of Honor championship on Jesus Christ, and I, I, I don't think if anyone's going to care. And, you know, you could have final battle on the Brooklyn Bridge, and I, I, I just don't know 
if a lot of people are going to care. But hey, man, they're going to have it at the Hammerstein Ballroom on December 20th. I think the this, this show is still going to be awesome. I think it's going to be great. You know, the, the, the biggest question is how many people will care to see it. I wish I could go to the show live. Um, man, it just kind of kind of had me reminiscing. Like, at Final Battle 2011, like, like wow, what, what a change that was. I actually bought, you know, we actually, a couple of guys on YouTube, we actually went to the shows together, and I actually bought all the tickets myself. And just, uh, you know... Obviously, they paid me back when we got there, but it just, it just showed, I don't know. I would never do that today uh, for whatever the reason, but um, yeah, man. Um, I, I actually wish I could go, though. But uh, Final Battle, it, sh it should definitely be a fun show. Uh, you're probably going to get Jericho and Mark Briscoe, but the rest of that card should be really fun. You know, the idea that they're actually going back to the Hammerstein Ballroom is pretty cool, but I will say, I think the Grand Ballroom was actually better you know, f for Ring of Honor shows than the Hammerstein. The Hammerstein, you have more, you know, mainstream fans, more of an audience kind of shitting on things. And I, some there were some shows, like a new level, where I thought they took away from the shows. But uh, the fact that Final Battle is going to be back at the Hammerstein, I'm actually excited about it. I'm excited about Full Gear. Hope everybody enjoyed the video. Um, and, uh, yeah, enjoy the pay-per-view tonight, man. We're, we're just hours away. I actually, I, I kind of like doing these previews uh, better, like when we're just like hours away from the show. It, it feels a little bit more exciting. I don't know what you guys think, but, uh, yeah. Hope you enjoy the video, and I'm out. All right.